doctors normally don't prescribe or encourage herbal things because there's no FDA. Right. There's no, well, two things. Sometimes there's not very good studies about it. So there's not a lot of data to, to guide the doctors on what, um, or the patients, you know, on what, how much do you take, uh, how well does it work, and what does it work for. But also, um, FDA doesn't regulate how much is in, a, a, like if you went to Walmart and bought uh, St. John's Ward, it'll say on there how much is supposed to be in each, each capsule. That's not regulated by anybody. Nobody, FDA doesn't take samples off the shelf, test it, and say, yeah, okay, it meets the requirements. It's within this range or that amount, uh, like they do with prescriptions. That doesn't mean they don't work. It just means it might be variable. So even if it was something that worked, um, it might work. You know, you might be taking a certain amount, and then boom, you get a bad batch. And nobody would, you wouldn't know that. You just might get worse, and you wouldn't have any idea why. Um, there is some evidence uh, having said that, there is some evidence that some of the herbal things, herbal, uh, well, I shouldn't just say herbal, but alternative, let's just use that word, alternative medications uh, or treatments might work. Um, some of the ones that we think, like for depression, there's a, a treatment called SAM-E, and it's a great big long chemical name that I couldn't pronounce, S-adenyl methionine or something like that. The only problem is that it's just as expensive as uh, prescription. <laughs> if you, you have to use quite a bit of it, and uh, I've priced it like a Sam's Club, just curiosity to see how much it was. When you add up how many capsules you have to take, it ends up being just as much as you know Prozac or Zoloft or one of those every month. Um, so it, it, in a couple of studies, it's been, a, it's been equally effective to an, the prescription antidepressants. Um, fish oil, there's some interesting data about fish oil. It's still a little bit up in the air, but for bipolar depression, fish oil, there was a, a study using 9,000 milligrams. 9,000 milligrams, 9 grams of fish oil um, that, that helped their uh, people with bipolar disorder, you know, and they were in a depressed phase. It helped bring them out of the depression without making them manic, which is always the concern, you know, with, uh, with bipolar disorder. What else? St. John's wort is, for mild depression, maybe, but it's not really recommended because it actually can interact with other prescription medicines and sometimes cause uh, severe reactions, hepatic, you know, the liver problems and serotonin syndrome and some other things. And so um, <clears throat> I think in the United States that's that's kind of fallen out of favor. Um, now you mentioned serotonin. Uh, now I understand that melatonin is produced, our body produces that. Right, right. So take okay, more of that. Um, melatonin is produced for, well, the, the theory is that this is what we think is happening is when when you go to sleep, at, when, when it gets dark at night, uh, let me make sure I get this right, the melatonin secretion increases. Okay, which then is they think is, is part of your body, your body's kind of your circadian or clock sort of cycle. So you, you basically start to get sleepy when it gets dark, and then when it starts to get light in the morning, uh, your your melatonin level drops, and it's supposed to wake you up. And we have a lot of trouble because now we've changed time, so almost all of us get up when it's dark. So we're we're sort of fighting our bodies a little bit. And that's why it's so hard to get out of bed when it's dark. Probably if you. If you notice, you know, in the summers, you know, when it's, when it's you know, 6 a.m. comes and the sun starts, how much easier it is to get up? So, um, you know, people have studied melatonin for, for jet lag, for things like, you know, like trouble falling asleep. Um, and it's, it's been variable. It's not, it's not really clear why, but sometimes it works in some studies. In some studies, it doesn't seem to work. And so, you know, who knows why that is? I don't know if it's because we just don't understand it fully like we should or if the taking an external amount of it is just not working, maybe it's not getting in the brain where it needs to be, um, a lot of possibilities, but it's intriguing, but I don't, I think it's too early to, I mean, nobody really knows for sure, so I probably wouldn't waste my money on it. I think, on the other hand, what you could do is, is um, you know, play with the natural, the light, for instance. Um, this is something I do, it's kind of corny, but I have a little thing called a sun riser. It's a, a little timer that sets up to my to my bedside uh, light, and what happens is, as let's say I want to get up at 6 a.m., this little this little thing brings starts to bring my light up real gradually from about 5:30 and then until it's full brightness at 6 a.m. So it's like the sun rising right next to my bed, and basically what's I'm sure what it's doing is it's suppressing my melatonin, which then allows me to wake up better. And I sure enough, I you know how usually you get up and it's dark and you're groggy and uh, you know this kind of thing, I kind of jump out of bed. It's, it helps a lot. Um, 
Where did I get that? I probably somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Didn't wake your so wife I'm up. Selling, I'm selling. See, they should pay me commission here. Uh, the, the brand, I mean, I'm, there's probably other brands. I mean, it's nothing fancy. Probably anybody, somebody could figure out how to make it, but it's just a, it's, just it has to have a timer on it. You know, it has to have a clock on it so you can set it you know, for the current time and then what time you want to get out. But it's called the Sun Riser. It's R I Z R or something like that. Sun Riser, R I Z R. But incidentally, some people have, you know, we've talked about seasonal affective disorder here before. And um, so some people, so the theory is there, you know, the days get, get very, very short in the winters, and you have all this nighttime, in the, and even during the day it doesn't get very bright. And so somehow that, that affects the mood, you know. And we, you know, I, if you think about it, what happens, to the, the kind of depression that people feel in the winter, that, that seasonal affective, to me looks very much like hibernation. It's like, we, it's like we're meant to be hibernating. Yeah. But we're not. We're not allowed to because we're our society says no. So no naps, no none of this stuff, right? I think probably what should happen, what we should be doing, is we should be sleeping more in the winter and sleeping less in the summer. And I think that would be a normal thing. We sleep when it gets dark, we wake up when it gets light. That's I mean, think about it in the old days, you know, caveman days, you know. You didn't do anything after dark because you didn't you had to do it by fire. You didn't have anything else to so we sort of artificially you know, do something our bodies aren't, don't want us to do, and then we end up paying for it, you know? Uh, so the way folks deal with that is they have a bright light, they have bright light therapy. So the person with seasonal affective disorder, they would sit in front of a bright light for an hour and a half every morning. And the bright light is supposed to mimic the sun, the sunlight without the harmful rays. And they just read a book or something in front of it. They don't stare at it, they just read a book in front of it for an hour and a half every morning and it tends to 